Alright. Holy. Alright, sorry I'm late, boys. Um, <clears throat> like I said, my monitor cable broke. <laughs> Holy. But I think we're good. I think we're good. Alright. crazy. 10 seconds, here we go. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson oh. from Grinding Gear Games. Thanks for joining us for today's live stream as we reveal our upcoming expansion, The Forbidden Sanctum, which launches on December 9th on PC and Mac and on December 14th on console. Here's what you can expect from today's live stream. We'll start by debuting the trailer for The Forbidden Sanctum, and we'll then do a deep dive on the League itself. The live stream <laughs> concludes with a Q&A session between Ziggy D and me, where we'll answer questions from Twitch chat. Then we'll drop the full patch notes. Let's get started with a trailer for the Forbidden Sanctum, which launches in one week. Many have met their fate here in the shade of Fel Shrine. So, step lightly. But here you are bound by new rules. My rules. A lot of damage. Room complete. Each step with gold oh, to tempt you. A foe to wound you. A curse to spite you. But do not give up. For vast riches Maybe the wait the gold. Pillage this farmable. sanctum if you must. And one day you How may you? uncover its secrets. We didn't have to loot it. This looks roguelike. But it's like, it's nicely put up. Wow. This is pretty much exactly what I hoped for, I think. Yo! Oh! <laughs> oh, that looks sick. <laughs> what? Wow. All right, yeah, go back that to the wild. Atlas. Go back to the Atlas. Whoa. You know they did the Star Forge thing probably just for you. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah, because you're always ranting about Star Forge. And his favor. True. 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 The I'll Forbidden get Sanctum trailer. is an old Templar enclave, long rumored to be hidden beneath the Fell Shrine ruins. Abandoned for a long time, it is now controlled by a malevolent entity. In this league, you'll explore it, find out its secrets, and deal with the evil that lurks there. The Sanctum Challenge League is a roguelike game, played out one room at a time as you oh, explore wow. Rayclast <laughs> and the Atlas in Path of Exile. In every area or map you enter, you can make a choice of which room in the Sanctum you will explore Golden. next. On the Sanctum map, you can see the contents of a few rooms ahead, enabling you to plot a path through its dangerous halls. And the oh. Sanctum is dangerous. Like most roguelikes, you should not expect to be able to complete it on your first try. Getting to the deeper floors requires experience, knowledge, and luck. You should expect that your early attempts will fail, but over time, you'll be able to push yourself farther and farther. As you progress deeper into the Sanctum, you'll find a variety of treasures that will help you eventually fight your way to the dangers that await you at the end of its four floors. Eventually, Wait. by endgame, you may be able to push through all four feet. floors to face the final boss. Every roguelike needs a resource to help you track how well the run is going. In the Forbidden Sanctum, it is your resolve, indicated by this bar here. As you explore the Sanctum, your resolve is threatened by the dangers within. When you lose all of your resolve, your Sanctum run ends. Your level of resolve is maintained oh. between consecutive rooms on your run, but is only shown when you're in the Sanctum itself. The resolve mechanic applies equally to all build archetypes. Save, that's your resolve is reduced when you are hit by monsters or environmental hazards in the Sanctum, and these telegraphed attacks are not affected by regular Path of Exile defensive mechanics, such as evasion, armor, or block. While these attacks do some nominal damage to your regular life, the bulk of their impact is against your resolve. This mechanic provides a mechanism for tracking your progress between rooms, where your regular life pool would long ago have been recovered. Another aspect of the resolve system is that characters who are struggling can be ejected from the Sanctum without actually having to die, avoiding experience loss or hardcore death. 
So maintaining a healthy level of resolve is key as you navigate the Sanctum, and that means making careful choices of what rooms you enter. Let's have a look at some of the things that Sanctum rooms can contain. Wow. Afflicted rooms cause you to gain an affliction when you enter them. Afflictions make your Sanctum run more difficult. For example, reducing your resolve recovery, causing rewards to become hidden on the Sanctum map, or causing Sanctum rooms to spawn volatile anomalies that follow you. These minor afflictions accumulate as you get deeper and deeper into a run, making it more challenging. I don't Major know if afflictions I like that, exist but it's and are a big deal. They have significant consequences, such as entirely preventing the recovery of resolve. So, a Sanctum run gets harder and harder as you pick up more afflictions. Sounds great. But every roguelike needs a way for you to gain power throughout your run. In the Forbidden Sanctum, that system is boons. Boons are beneficial buffs that help wow. you as you progress through the Sanctum. Minor Yo, boons make things a little easier, such babies. as slowing down monsters or adding a special shield to your resolve called Inspiration. Major mm. boons don't come along often, but have large effects, such as preventing you from receiving more minor afflictions or recovering your resolve to 50% the next time you run out. That's Due to the vast cool, variety though. of afflictions and boons, no two runs are the same. Generally speaking, your best sanctum runs are the ones where the afflictions you choose have this little effect on awesome. you, and the boons either counteract them or have a large benefit for the strategy you're running. Some rooms in the sanctum contain a fountain which will restore some of your lost resolve. Others contain afflicted fountains oh my that God, restore even Haiti. more resolve at a cost. Rooms with a treasure reward contain chests full of the Templar Aureus currency, a type of gold coin they used for commerce within their sanctum. You'll also find some Aureus coins from monsters that you kill as you explore. These are picked up automatically, like Azerite, and are not tradable, and like your afflictions and boons, are lost when your sanctum run ends. Some rooms contain a merchant who accepts oh. your Aureus coins in exchange for boons. Plan your purchases carefully, as you Actually, may encounter the merchant again later oh on with even gosh. more expensive boons to purchase. Occasionally, the sinister powers controlling the Sanctum will present you with a choice of making an accursed pact. You are given several pacts to choose from, and can even opt to take all that you are offered. All pacts have a big upside and a big downside, such as exchanging a portion of your maximum resolve for a random major boon. It's very dangerous to make a pact, but if you pick the right circumstances, your gamble could pay off. In addition to rewards that help you progress through the Sanctum, many rooms let you immediately receive Path of Exile currency items, but with a twist. Whenever you're offered some currency items that you can receive right away, you are also offered a more valuable option that will oh. be waiting for you after the boss fight at the end of the current floor of the Sanctum. It's a gamble, because if you fail your run before you reach reward. and defeat the boss, you will not receive the reward you picked. Later on, you're offered the extreme temptation of getting a massive currency reward that is conditional on completing your entire Sanctum run without failing. At a specific point in the Forbidden Sanctum storyline, you'll discover a special altar that Templar relics can be placed on. These relics directly affect your Sanctum runs and are not lost when a run ends. They persist throughout the League as a permanent source of meta progression. Acquiring new Burn. and better relics is one of the ways you can push farther and farther with each run you try. Relics cannot be crafted and cannot be traded, as they represent your personal progression throughout the League. You'll accumulate more than you can use simultaneously, Die. so you'll have options to fine-tune your strategy from run to run. You can store your extra relics in the Relic Locker, a free storage space like the Expedition Locker. We don't want to spoil important story details, but the end boss of the Forbidden Sanctum can drop unique items from a pool exclusive to this League. Today we'd like to show you a unique amulet called Eternal Damnation. This amulet offers a powerful way to gain additional elemental mitigation by introducing the concept of elemental damage reduction. Despite the drawback of reducing your maximum resistances, if you have sufficient chaos resistance, this is more than compensated for. Because of the roguelike nature of the Forbidden Sanctum, <laughs> defeating yeah. the boss of a floor is a difficult achievement and hence rewards a lot of experience. You may fail on the way, so if you do manage it, expect a good experience boost for your achievement. Another reward you can find is a special type of relic called a Sanctified Relic that has mods that directly affect your character's build. You can only unlock one slot for this type of relic, and while these relics can't be crafted through conventional means, you may find special reward rooms in the Sanctum that can modify is that them. Permanent? These relics like, exist for this league only, only and provide a boost to character power for sanctum? players who are able to master the Sanctum. The Sanctum League offers a roguelike experience Wait, that tempts you into taking risks of the and rewards you if those pay off. There's a lot to explore in the Sanctum, Everywhere. and we can't wait to hear about your experiences next week. Wow. 
What? In each expansion leading up to Path of Exile 2's release, we're improving Path of Exile's endgame, with new content to explore and improvements to how you customize your endgame experience. In the Forbidden Sanctum expansion, we're revamping the Atlas Tree, reworking our Eldritch Altars function, and are introducing two new Atlas memories. The Atlas Tree is generally working really well, but has a few problems we'd like to address. The tree offers you the ability to specialize in killing pinnacle bosses, providing extra rewards when you do so. While this sounds good on paper, it creates a situation where you're incentivized to specialize your tree for regular mapping, save up all of your boss fights, then respec fully into boss mode, and then do all of your saved up boss fights before specking back Atlas again. Books or something, maybe? Ideally, the design of the Atlas Tree would let you yeah, spec into one like build it. and then just play the game. We have removed all boss bonuses from the Atlas Tree and have baked some of them into the actual base properties of the boss fights. For example, you don't need to allocate the gaze into the abyss notable that makes the elder more likely to drop a watcher's eye, as he just has that drop chance built in now. Right. The Atlas Tree is now focused on allowing you to Good. specialize into content that you encounter in every map. We also want you to be able to specialize into your favorite leagues even more deeply on the Atlas Tree. For each of the 10 leagues that the tree lets you disable, Ooh. we've added a bunch more passives to the tree. These new passives allow you to increase the league's spawn chance to much higher levels than currently possible and juice the league even further than before. Oh, wow. We are making a number of changes to Eldritch Altars that mostly affect their rewards, Good. but will also affect gameplay decisions you make involving them. Some of the key changes include splitting up the basic currency, scarab, and divination card rewards to be explicit in their description of what rewards you'll get. For example, instead of map bosses dropping three unknown basic currency items, the altar specifically says which currency item they'll drop. As part of this change, we've removed some of the lower value yet quite common currency rewards from the pool, such as orbs of augmentation and orbs of transmutation. Speaking of scarabs, these will be less available from altars, but we've improved their availability elsewhere to offset them. Rusted scarabs can now drop from the core drop pool, and we've added a vendor recipe that allows you to upgrade your scarabs up to gilded using the normal 3 to 1 ratio. You can also perform this action from your Fragment tab using the new Upgrade button. We have made reward types exclusive to different influences, right. so that you know which influence type to invest in if you want to target farm a certain reward. To give you a specific example, if you run maps influenced by, say, Eater of Worlds, you'll see Divine Orbs from the Basic Currency reward more than twice as often as before. We've also rebalanced rewards so that choices that affect boss drops or influence monster drops are comparatively more valuable. The Wrath of the Cosmos Keystone has been reworked. Previously, it was so rewarding that players Wrath. felt obligated to use it despite its extreme level of difficulty. It has retained the risk versus reward element, but with the overall intensity toned down. You can now also get awakened gems from defeating Maven Witness map bosses. This additional reward helps further balance the expected returns from the various types of influence. For more detail on these changes, check out the balance manifesto we posted last week, or the upcoming patch notes. In the Lake of Calandra expansion, we introduced Atlas right. Memories. When applied to your Atlas, they unlock a sequence of maps that tells the story of an NPC's past. These stories manifest as specialized encounters that involve a new challenge and exciting rewards. In this expansion, we've introduced two new Atlas Memories, describing events related to beastry and domination. The beastry memory line allows you to capture harvest monsters as beasts for your menagerie. These harvest beasts can be used in nine new beast crafting recipes. These recipes cover an array of options. For example, you can remove one of the special modifiers from a Watcher's Eye Jewel and then add another. This can have potent results, but won't affect the life, mana, or energy shield modifiers. You can re-roll an Awakened Gem from one type to another. Pardon? Another example is that you can also re-roll a Synthesis Implicit modifier. If your item has more than one Synthesis Implicit, it will randomly re-roll one of them. The Domination Atlas memory thrusts you into a tale of pantheon gods that stand watch over their shrines. Like regular shrines, these are guarded by monsters and emit a buff that empowers the monsters until you claim that buff for yourself. This Atlas memory introduces a new set of shrines with specialized buffs guarded by rare monsters that drop tantalizing rewards. The Forbidden Sanctum expansion introduces a new type of shard that can drop from Harbingers, Fracturing Shards. When combined together into a full currency item, you get the Fracturing Orb, which behaves the same as a Fracturing Craft from Harvest. It can be used on any rare item with at least four modifiers. When the orb is applied, it locks one of the modifiers in place so that further crafting efforts do not affect that modifier. Items I'm fractured in this way can only have one fractured modifier. Previously, this crafting option was gated behind the Oshabi fight in Harvest. 
Now that it has been rehomed to Harbinger, the harvest crafting option is no longer available. That's this fair. means that you'll be able to use your harvest life force and Ashabi kills on other crafts. Because fracturing shards drop from Harbingers, you'll be able to target farm them by specking into Harbinger content on your Atlas tree. The Forbidden Sanctum expansion introduces a number of new skill gems. In addition to some new melee Val skills we'll discuss later in the livestream, there are two oh. totally new skills that we'd like to unveil today. I love Val Volcanic skills. Fissure is a new fiery slam skill that can be used with staves, maces, axes, and unarmed attacks. I can't believe we're getting new Val Strike skills. the ground to create a chasm that winds towards your target. This chasm can path around corners before erupting as the fissure gets as close as it can reach. It releases a burst of fiery projectiles that oh. explode on striking the ground. Enemies hit by multiple impacts will take a lot of stacked damage. Use it up close for reliable bursts of damage, or aim far away to damage a larger area. Frozen Legion is an unusual spell, summoning a ring of icy statues that attack with your own weapon damage. Oh, this skill has multiple cooldown stacks, skill, and consumes all cooldown uses at yeah. once to summon yeah. a statue for each available cooldown. Yeah. The Played statues down, perform a sweeping ice slash, and these sweeps can overlap, resulting in multiple hits against targets close to you. The spell can be used with staves, maces, and axes. The skill is particularly powerful with slow, heavy weapons, as while the statues will use your attack speed, you should instead prioritize the spell's own cast time and cooldown. This expansion also introduces huh. many new Val melee skills. As you know, equipping a Val skill gem grants Val you both shatter. the Val and regular version of the Imagine skill. Helix, As you kill enemies, the gem charges up with their oh, souls, melee. and after a certain number are collected, the Val <laughs> skill can be used once. <laughs> Most of the new Val skills introduced in this expansion are melee skills, and this results oh, in an <laughs> indirect buff to any melee builds that use one of these skills. Where previously you'd just be using your melee skill wow. to kill enemies, you now get to periodically use Reeve a super-powered crying. version of a skill. If you like Flicker Strike, you'll love Val Flicker Strike, as it really dials up the concept of letting fate take the wheel. Val Flicker Strike causes you to flicker what? dozens of extra times, <laughs> slashing enemies. During this time, you don't deal any damage to the enemies you slash. You're quite vulnerable due to not leeching or generating fortify stacks. When you finish flickering, if you survived, of course, you'll be rewarded with a single huge hit of damage against <laughs> each enemy you slashed. Uh, Val Cleave is a new Val skill that buffs the behavior of its non Val version, in a similar way to how Val Reeve works. Val Cleave triggers two buffs one when oh. you kill a rare enemy, and one when you kill either a rare or unique enemy. The latter is a strong buff to regular Cleave, buff. which you can keep up almost permanently if you're able to kill rare or unique enemies often enough. The bonus for killing a rare enemy is that you get to steal its mods for a time. You can enjoy part of the power of having a headhunter without actually needing to find one. Overall, Val Cleave yeah. is a pretty powerful wow. upgrade to any melee build that could run Cleave. That plus two radius buff is looking pretty good now, right? <laughs> Don't hurt me. We'll showcase the other new Val skills we're introducing over the coming oh, week. That's so funny. The Forbidden Sanctum expansion introduces over 15 <laughs> new unique items, from Sanctum exclusive uniques to ones that can be found from Path of Exile's pinnacle bosses. I'd like to show you three examples of these, designed by winners of our prior league's boss kill races. Progenesis is a unique amethyst flask that was designed by Ben and drops from the Uber Maven. It's a defensive flask that grants a mini version of the petrified blood effect, but without requiring you to be on low life. This is a useful tool to prevent you getting one shot by large amounts of incoming damage in scary situations. Rational Doctrine is a unique jewel that was designed by Rawlings and drops from Uber Venarius. By manipulating your attributes, you can change how this jewel behaves. While the ideal dream outcome is that you manage to get your strength and intelligence tied for highest, enabling both of the benefits simultaneously, the jewel is still very powerful if it only grants your wow. choice of permanent consecrated ground or permanent profane ground. Entropic Devastation is a pair of unique gloves wow. that were designed by Gucci Pradas and dropped from the Uber Shaper. Currently, the ways to get Spell Impale are very limited. These gloves provide the powerful property of causing all of your spells wow. to impale on crit. So let's talk about unique weapons, specifically endgame unique weapons. In many ways, the weapon is the most iconic oh. and important item on a character, so it's very important that we make them exciting and worthy of their unique status. While some unique weapons have special properties that enable entirely new builds, others are best compared to powerful rare items as a primary source of your character's damage. We have to be very careful when pitching the power level of these unique weapons. If they're not powerful enough, then they're useless and are ignored. But if they're too powerful, then they discourage entire archetypes of characters from trying to find or craft rare weapons. 
Interestingly, the above problem doesn't apply to belts. Despite Mageblood and Headhunter both existing as extremely powerful unique items, people still craft plenty of rare belts. That's because Mageblood and Headhunter are extremely rare and people don't actually expect they'll reliably get one in a league. Players tend to treat them as luxury upgrades to their build rather than something they're certain to get. In this expansion, we're promoting 10 iconic but underused unique weapons to the same tier of rarity as Mageblood and Headhunter. We are buffing them a gigantic amount and are making them incredibly hard to find. Maybe five? Remember when Starforge used to be an exciting item? Well, after this change, it certainly is again. It still drops exclusively from the Shaper and the Uber Shaper, but it'll take a lot of runs or a lot of luck to earn it. Over the next week, we'll reveal the other unique quality. weapons that have been massively buffed. We have targeted around 10 iconic underused unique weapons and have generally buffed DPS? only their damage stat, but by a lot. Wow. We've made a number of changes to jewels that are covered in a recent balance manifesto, but in case you missed it, we want to quickly summarize what the changes are. In the Forbidden Sanctum expansion, we have made jewels a better source of ailment mitigation by buffing the values of ailment-focused jewel modifiers and adding new modifiers that enable mitigation to a wider variety of ailments than before. We have also removed some ailment mitigation really modifiers game. that were only available on jewels through corruption because there are now better options through the regular jewel mod pool. This also means that other desirable corruption modifiers, like immunity to corrupting blood, are more likely to roll. We want the moment of finding a unique jewel Ooh. to be way more exciting than it currently is. We've added a handful of new, very powerful unique jewels and have removed some old, less interesting ones. An example of one of these new unique jewels is Fire Song, which propagates any modifiers to your Ignite mitigation to other elemental ailments. If you're able to substantially reduce the duration of Ignites on you, then you can use Fire Song to basically shrug off any elemental ailment. For full information about the other changes to unique jewels, wow. check out the Balance Manifesto like post we made recently. That's very interesting. When we first created the Arch Nemesis monster mod system, our goal was to improve Path of Exile's outdated set of monster mods with new and interesting mechanics that have modern game balance. That's we feel good. that Arch Nemesis did introduce a lot of interesting mechanics, but it unfortunately had several of its own problems. We have replaced Arch Nemesis with a system that is more similar to the way monster mods worked in the past. The new monster mods are a lot simpler. They now each do one thing and very clearly state what they do. Each encounter with a rare monster is now less complex and is easier to understand in the heat of combat compared to Arch Nemesis. There will still encounter challenging up, combinations of mods from time <laughs> to time, but this emergent synergy will be rarer than it was under Arch Nemesis. The goal is that combat is interesting and varied with moments that get your heart racing but without What's the frustrations the of the Arch Nemesis <laughs> system. Let's talk about rewards. Under Arch Nemesis, it often felt mandatory to bring in a magic find culling character to kill some monsters for you in order to maximize your rewards. In the new system, we've added a significant pool of new rewards to rares, but the reward that is on the monster is hidden and not associated with a specific mod, so you don't know what kind of rewards you will get until you kill the monster. Rare monsters with more mods are more likely to have these special hidden reward bonuses. To find out more about other balance changes that are taking place in the Forbidden Sanctum, check out the patch notes which will be available when the livestream ends. Over the last year or so, some of our senior developers have been tinkering with a more challenging way to play Path of Exile. We've been publicly alpha testing this mode, known as Ruthless, for the last month, and are planning to make it available to anyone who's interested alongside the launch of the Forbidden Sanctum next week. Ruthless is an optional additional character flag like Hardcore or Solo Cell Found that completely changes how Path of Exile feels to play. Ruthless is a lot more difficult than regular Path of Exile, but it doesn't achieve this by making the monsters harder to kill. It instead focuses on reducing character power through extreme item scarcity, limited crafting, and many other changes such as support gems being drop only. We've posted an article about the philosophy and rules of Ruthless on pathofexile.com slash ruthless. We plan to release this mode alongside the Forbidden Sanctum expansion in a week. In addition to being a character flag like Hardcore or Solo Self Found, it's also available as a modifier for private leagues. To be clear, the Forbidden Sanctum League content can be played in Ruthless with appropriately balanced rewards. Ruthless is still very experimental during 320, <laughs> no but reward. we won't be afraid to make mid-league balance changes to it during this experimental phase. Ruthless is not for everyone, but so far it has found a supportive and growing group of players who enjoy the additional challenge that it brings. If it sounds like something you're interested in, then try it out next time you're looking for a new way to enjoy Path of Exile. This expansion also contains a number of small quality of life improvements. Some examples are Divine Vessels can now be used by right-clicking them rather than taking them to Sin. On the player overhead life bar, the energy shield bar is split into a separate bar. 
You can now right click an itemized temple of Atsuwako <gasps> to see its layout. For seven and years. most importantly, beast crafting recipes seven that add mods to begging. flasks now actually say what the mods do. We'll post more information about these and other quality of life improvements in the lead up to release. Today we're launching two new series of supporter packs, the this Forge and Gem for. packs. Each tier contains the pack's full face value and points, plus several exclusive microtransactions. These packs will only be available for the duration of the Sanctum Challenge League and will leave the store forever in three months. As always, these microtransactions are entirely cosmetic and do not affect your character's progression or power. The Forge series of supporter packs contains six exclusive microtransactions. The clockwork back attachment ramps up as you build a kill streak, building pressure and releasing it when your streak ends. The Delirious Hideout Decoration lets you summon Delirium Fog in your hideout at will, complete with strange voices and terrifying apparitions. That's sick. Okay. You're looking a little pale. Exile. No thanks. No thanks. <laughs> the Forge Guard armor set summons a hammer and anvil so that everyone nearby can watch you craft. Oh, that's sick. That's so cool! The ethereal fusing effect turns your item linking attempts into a spectator sport. If you manage to hit a six link, people watching are even prompted to send a congratulatory message. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> the congratulate's kind of annoying. No, that's annoying. Summoning the crow oh, storm guess. portal effect causes a murder of crows to erupt from the portal. The portal becomes dormant if you are too far away from it, causing the crows to take to the skies. Wow. The High Templar weapon effect smites the undead you fight and scours the souls of those you put to rest. Wow. The Gemling Pack series also has six exclusive These are microtransactions. So cool, the Beehive weapon effect lets your weapon play host to a swarm of angry bees, which erupt from the hive whenever you hit an enemy with a weapon. Critical hits cause the hive to send out its best warriors. The Stampede Quicksilver Flask makes you the leader of your own personal rower herd. Activating the flask causes a host of ghostly rowers to charge alongside you. I'm not using that one. <laughs> this is the Gemling Artificer armor set. It is inlaid with gems that match the gems you've socketed in your oh. items. Crafting gems with gem cutters prisms, cool. val orbs, or regrading lenses visualizes the process for all to see. This armor set also includes alternate Very gem level cool. up effects. Prospero's ring blesses you with a constant shower of coins, stuff, and it helps you thank players you've traded with through a hearty fist bump. <laughs> the consuming ooze <laughs> pet bounces alongside you and devours corpses in your wake, spitting out a tidy pile of bones. Wow. Finally, this pack allows you to reunite with Kadiro Perandus, Wait. inviting him to your hideout as a vendor. In addition to buying items from you and using his connections ah. to accept your divination cards, he'll provide commentary on your goods, equipment, and anything else he sees fit to judge you for. That might be a little too much to drink, even for me. Yes. Kadiro has hundreds of lines of voice acting. What? Oh, a mighty headhunter. I'm so... So impressed. <laughs> Try to duck when the brain fragments splatter everywhere. You wouldn't want to sully your armor. <laughs> That's really These cool. new packs are available right now at pathofxl.com slash purchase. Purchases like these directly fund the ongoing development of Path of Exile 1 and 2, and we really appreciate your support. Actually, Meanwhile, the knight and rogue packs leave the store forever yeah. in one week, so now is your last chance to purchase them. The Calandra edition of Kirik's Vault Pass is only available until the end of the Calandra League and will be replaced with a new set of unique items when the Forbidden Sanctum launches. Next up, we've got the Q&A with Ziggy D. Once that ends, we'll post the full patch notes for the Forbidden Sanctum. Thanks for joining us and checking out the Forbidden Sanctum. We can't wait to join you in Rayclast on December 9th.